Okay, so for many of my projects I'm using OLED displays and for some of them I've also used the transparent ones. But today I want to show you something different and that's this display. It's also the OLED display but it has this mirror-like appearance. You can see that as I tilt this display around it's reflecting the environment and at some angles you can actually see the reflection of those glowing pixels like being inside of the OLED display. So today I will show you how to use this display with Arduino Uno and show a static image on it. Now before we start let me tell you one thing and that is I have to tell you that I don't really understand why this display looks the way it looks like. I mean it looks cool, it looks very unusual but I don't really know if there is any technical advantage of having such a display. If you know what might be the advantage of using this display instead of a normal OLED display please let me know in the comments. So let me show you how to use this display with Arduino Uno. And the first thing that we are interested in when we are dealing with those displays is the used chip. When I flip the display the label on the PCB says SPD1320 but you have to take this information with the grain of salt. And that's because the used chip is actually SSD1320 not SPD. Unfortunately something like this is happening quite a lot especially with those cheap displays. Last time I was using this small display that is clearly stating that the resolution is 70 by 40 pixels but it was actually 72 by 40 pixels. Thankfully the resolution on our display is correct and that's 160 by 80 pixels. And once we know the used chip and the resolution, the next thing to decide is to which library to use. My favorite Arduino library for drawing on the OLED displays is called UADG2. So I will open the documentation and open the full list of supported devices. And here I will search for SSD 1320 in the resolution of 160 by 80 pixels. And it seems like that this display is supported. If I open the initialization, we have both SPI and I2C version. And I actually have both displays. This board with just 4 pins is configured for the I2C connection and the second one with 7 pins is configured for the SPI connection. I will show you how to use both but I will start with the I2C version because that one is much simpler to connect to Arduino. Simply because we have only 4 wires. I will not be starting from scratch but from my older video titled Image to OLED in 60 seconds. You should definitely watch it if you haven't done it already because it only takes 60 seconds. And if I open the description there should be a link to the walk with simulation. And if I start the simulation there is a full screen image being displayed on the OLED display connected to the Arduino Uno using the I2C connection. Now if I look at the code most of the stuff is just a pixel representation of this full screen image. So if I minimize this part you can see that we have only a few lines. We first included the UHG2 library and then call the initialization. This particular display has the chip SSD 1306 with the resolution of 128 by 64 pixels and it's also connected using the hardware I2C connection. Then inside the setup function we are starting the UHG2 library and then inside the loop we are clearing the buffer, drawing this image to the buffer and then sending the buffer to the display. Let's use this code as a starting point and copy it inside the Arduino IDE. As for the initialization we want to use our new display and we want to use the hardware I2C connection, the F stands for full screen buffer. So I'll copy this line, paste it in the Arduino IDE and we need to type in U8G2 before the bracket, the rotation will be R0 and since the reset pin is not connected I will just copy this part as well so reset is pin UX pin none so no pin being connected. I will comment out the old initialization, select my Arduino board, it's Arduino Uno. Now if you haven't used the UHG2 library before you have to go to libraries, type in UHG2 and install the library and then just click the upload button. And we have a problem because there is not enough memory on the board. We are using 106% of the dynamic memory of the RAM memory. So let's talk about the memory usage. This sketch is running on the Arduino Uno just fine and it's using 128 by 64 pixel display which means that we need to store 8000 bits for individual pixels or 124 bytes. The Arduino Uno has 2 kilobytes of RAM so we are using half of the memory for the frame buffer which seems to be working just fine. Our current display has the resolution of 160 by 80 pixels so we need 12,000 bits for individual pixels or 1,600 bytes and while this is still lower than 2 kilobytes we have to keep in mind that we also need to store other stuff in the RAM and in this particular case we are just out of memory. Thankfully there are ways how to solve it because I have this sketch where the Arduino Uno is driving display with the resolution of 128 by 128 pixels which means that we would need to have the frame buffer in the size of 2 kilobytes, which will pretty much leave no space for anything else. So the way how to solve this memory problem is not to allocate the entire frame buffer, but instead do something smaller and that could be done by using the initialization with number 1 or number 2 inside. 
So if I open the list of initializations, we can use this first line or the second line, and this is called page buffer. So I'll copy the first line, and again use this UADG2 name, rotation 0 and the no reset pin, and just paste it in here, comment out the old one, but there is one more difference when using the full screen buffer mode compared to the page mode, and that is inside the main loop. For the full screen buffer mode, we would use functions buffer and send buffer, but for the page mode, we need to use this page mode drawing loop. So I'll paste it down here and just replace the draw xbmp function with our draw xbmp function, like so, and delete this part of the sketch. And hopefully when I press the upload button now, the sketch should fit. And it seems to be the case, so now we are only using 36% of the RAM memory. The connection between the Arduino Uno and the OLED display should be the same as inside the walkway sketch, meaning that the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, SCL, the serial clock, goes to pin A5, and the SDA, the serial data, goes to pin A4. And so once everything is connected and you restart the Arduino board, you should see a full screen image on the OLED display. But it's not really full screen, because the resolution is 128 by 64 pixels, while our display is 160 by 80 pixels. So what I will do is I will take picture from this project called Arduino OLED Menu, and then use my favorite online free graphic editor called Photopea to redraw it in the bigger size. And that unfortunately requires a lot of manual work, because scaling a pixel image doesn't work very well. As you can see in here, so if I scale this image to 125% to fill the entire space, the result is a blurry image. And of course I can apply the threshold effect to lower the number of colors to just two, to just black and white, but it still looks wrong. So I will use this only as a reference image and then use various tools like pencil tool and eraser tool and redraw those elements one more time for this bigger resolution. By the way, if you want to know how to do this, it's described step by step in the OLED menu video. Unlike Photoshop, creating pixel circles in Photopea is quite challenging, so I ended up drawing those pixel by pixel. For the R icons, I've just tried to keep the line weight to one pixel. For the turbo gauge icon, I've also created those circles manually, but after I've drawn this icon, I've used the selection tool to tweak the sizes. For the labels, I've used the font called Greybeard, which is a recreation of the X11 font, and it has the advantage that this font is available in the UHG2 library. And so this is how the final screenshot looks like. I will export it as a PNG image by going to File, Export as PNG image, keep the default settings and click the Save button. And then I need to convert this image into a C style array, and for that I will be using the image to CPP website. I will select our image. Most of the settings could be kept to default. The only thing that I need to do is to click this swap checkbox, and that's required for the UHG2 library. Then click the generate code and copy output. Inside our Arduino sketch, I will delete the old image and paste our new image. And most likely the image name is different, so the variable name is different, so I'll copy the image name and use this image name in the draw xbmp function. And also the size is different, now it should be 160 by 80 pixels. When we are copying the array from the image to CPP website, there is this helper image which we don't really need, so I can delete this one as well, and then I can click the upload button and upload this to the Arduino board. And in a few seconds, we should finally see the full screen image being displayed on this mirror-like display. So let me show you how to do one more thing, and it is to show the same image on the SPI version of the display. And I keep saying it like it's a different display, but it's actually not. It's a very same display, very same chip, but the PCB is slightly different. And down here you can see that those resistors are slightly different, and that's because by applying high and low states on different pins on the SSD 1320 chip, you can switch between the I2C and the SPI communication. There are actually more methods available, but let's not worry about those for now. When I started using all the displays, the SPI connection was always a challenge for me. And that's mainly because for the I2C connection, the pin names are always SCL and SDA, but for the SPI connection, they have a lot of different names. If I open the Arduino Uno pinout and look for the SPI connection pins, you can see that those pins are named SCK, MISO, MOSI, SS, and actually none of those pins are on our PCB board. So let's take this one by one and try to assign those pins. The first two pins are simple, this is ground and VCC, which goes to ground and 5V power supply. The next pin is SCL, which stands for clock, and in the SPI pins you can see that we have pin SCK, which is also a clock, but a slightly different abbreviation. 
the next pin is SDA, which is for data, and for the SPI connection, we have two data lines. One is for the data coming from the Arduino to the display, and the other one would be from the display coming back to the Arduino. But since the display is not sending anything back to the Arduino, we don't need this line, we only need one line. And on the Arduino pinout, that's the line called MOSI, so it's master out, slave in, so the Arduino out and the display in. The next pin is reset, and that's actually not being listed in the Arduino pinout, because you can use any digital pin. And if I open the UHG2 documentation, you can see it here, so the reset is optional, you can use any pin, which is the case also for the CS and DC, which are the two last pins. The DC stands for data comment, so it's switching between the data and comments. And the last one is CS, which is for chip select. But on the Arduino Uno pinout, this one is actually listed as SS, as a slave select. So let's copy this hardware SPI initialization into our sketch pasted it down here, again use the UHG2 name, R04 rotation, now we've already told that the CS is the same as SS, so on the Arduino Uno it will be pin 10, the DC, the data comment, could be any pin, so let's for example use pin number 8, and since we have the reset pin, we will use this one as well, and that one we can connect for example to pin number 9, let's comment out the previous initialization, and connect the rest of the pins, again the ground will go to ground, and the VCC will go to 5 volts, SCL, the clock, will go to pin 13, SDA, the data will go to pin 11, a reset we've already assigned to pin 9, DC, the data comment, is assigned to pin number 8, and finally the CS, the chip select, should be on the pin number 10. Again, the CS is same as SS. By the way, for connection, I'm using this very cheap prototyping shield, which costs like $1 or so. And so with everything connected, we can upload this new sketch to the Arduino board. And we can see the very same image, but this time it's connected using the SPI connection. And most of the time, using the SPI will be faster compared to using I2C, but obviously for a static image like this, it makes no difference. And so that's how you use this nice, unusual looking display. If you want to know how to display more stuff than just a static image, please watch this playlist, which includes a lot of videos with a step-by-step -step tutorials. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.